Hey guys, John here with RealTruck.com and today I want to show you how to install the Rigid Industries Radiance LED light bar on this 2014 Jeep Wrangler. Alright guys, you can see here we've got our light out of the box and it comes with our light also our wiring pigtail and our mounting brackets if you're going to use the ones that come with it. Um, however, you're going to, I'm going to show you here in just a little bit, we're going to use the ones that we have on our Jeep already and we also have our instructions. Now one thing that you will need to get in order to properly wire this light up because of the backlighting feature and it's an item that's sold separate from the light, you can, uh, do, you can pick this up or you can wire it yourself however you want to wire it. However, um, I would suggest to pick up this multi-switch wiring harness from Rigid Industries, uh, part number 40200, and this is going to simplify the process of getting this done. So let's get this on the Jeep. So what we're going to do is we're going to start prepping our light here to get it ready to attach onto our Cargo Master Congo Safari roof rack. And, uh, but first, what we're going to do then is our brackets that come with our rigid light, we won't be using these um, because, quite honestly, they just won't attach to the rack. So these are designed if you want to put this light up on the front here someplace, or if you don't have this type of rack on your vehicle, you can use these, and these work out really nice. Uh, they basically would just attach on here. You can put them either way like this, or you can flip them out and put them this way. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. And then attach this to the, this part to the vehicle. Boom, your light's all in place. So, but because we're using this rack, we're gonna be doing a little bit different. We have these mounts that are an, ex, an extra accessory for the Cargo Master rack, and we're gonna be putting these on. So what we're gonna do is we're going to unscrew the self-locking nut on the end of our Rigid Industries Radiance LED light. All right, so we're gonna pull this self-tapping nut off and then we're gonna take the washer off of here. Now there's a spacer that goes in here, guys. I'm just gonna pull that out of here and show you guys here real quick so you can see that. There's a little spacer that goes in here. We're gonna leave that in place and leave that on there. And then we're going to take our mounting bracket and we're going to put our mounting bracket on just like such and our washer on and our self-locking nut. Now, I'm just gonna snug this down. I don't wanna tighten it because once we put this back up on the rack, we're gonna wanna adjust this. So uh, I wanna make sure that I have it loose enough that I can do that. Okay, and since I already know kinda how we're gonna be putting it, I'm gonna go ahead and set this back like this. Just to get it in the general idea of an area. Okay, and then we're just going to do the one on the other side, it, it, just like we did this one. And once we get this up and in place, then we have some caps that are going to go over top of this and hide that uh, nut and bolt in there so that it looks really nice on the rig. So let's get this one on as well. So we've got our brackets on our Light. So the next thing we're going to do then is we're going to put our light up here on our bar. Make sure we don't get our wire in the middle of it here. Then we'll kind of center it in here the best we can. Now this is kind of be going to be a little bit tricky just because of the nature of the way this thing is and the weight that we're dealing with. So I just want to get this started on here. Now, you might maybe would be a good idea to get a buddy to help you with this. So that way uh, you have somebody to help you hold this in place while you get this stuff started because you don't want to accidentally break the windshield. Now we're not going to tighten this all the way down because we're going to want to move this around a little bit. So we're just going to leave that and I'm just going to let it rest right there while I go over and do the one on the other side. Okay, so we've got those started. Um, next thing we want to do then is just make sure that I have this thing lined up and centered here. And that looks pretty good right there. Um, so I've already spoken with the person who owns this and he's kind of thinking he'd like to have this light right here. So I'm just going to hold this up a little bit 
and uh, go ahead and tighten these down. Let's double check my alignment here. Make sure we're centered. I think that's pretty good right there. So at this point, we're going to tighten up this mount, these mounting brackets. Something that's very important to keep in mind, guys, when you're mounting this light is to make sure that you don't mount it against the windshield because, um, trust me, you won't enjoy that the first trip down a rough road. Because no matter how much you think it won't, it will give and, and move a little bit because of the nature of the vehicle, and uh, you'll end up with a broken windshield. So, that's why we're going to mount this just a little off the windshield here. But still keep it down low so it looks cool. All right, so we've got our light mounted. What I'm going to do at this point then is I'm going to leave our bolts that hold it to the brackets loose because once we have it all wired up then we're going to want to be able to adjust it to get it set where we want it but as you can see here we've got plenty of space plenty of clearance on the windshield no worries about anything there so uh, at this point we can go ahead and start our wiring all right so we're ready to hook up our wiring kit but let's take a look at what comes in the wiring kit here so you guys can actually see what you're getting in the wiring kit we have, of course, both switches. One of them is for the backlight, the other one is for the light itself. Some fuses and uh, wire connectors and all the harness stuff and the relay as well. So um, this is all ready to go. We just gotta get this wired up to the light. So what we're gonna do here is lay out our wiring harness, make sure that uh, there's no fuse in this fuse holder and uh, Matter of fact, we'll just leave that open so that way we know there's no fuse in there. And then we have this red wire and black wire. These are gonna go to the red to the, to the battery positive, that's the plus, and the black to the ground or the battery negative, the minus side. So we're just gonna take these and we're just gonna lay them up over here for now so that we, we know where they go. And then we also have here these wires right here which are all the wires that go to our switches for turning our backlight and our light itself on. Uh, these, we're gonna take these and run through the firewall and into the cabin of the Jeep. And uh, so we're just gonna leave these right here. And then we have our other wires. I've gone ahead and put the, the connector ends, the butt connectors on these wires to get them prepped and ready to hook those up to our light. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna run this right up through here and through right beside the hood hinge. And uh, we're just gonna run these around underneath everything and bring them up here to our wire for our light. So uh, the next thing we're gonna do here then is go ahead and hook our wires up to our light and uh, get our, our, all of our wiring for our light laid out and then come back and then we'll finish up uh, with putting our wire through the fire, firewall and hooking up our battery wires. So let's get to that. All right, so we're gonna take our wires here now then and we're gonna hook our black to black and likewise the red to red and white to white. And see, those are a little long, so I need to trim them just a bit here. Because we want these to set really nice inside the connector. Now, you could, if you wanted to, solder these. Um, however, it's not necessary. So let's start hooking these together here. We we're going to do the black and black first, but the white one just happened to be in my hand, so we'll do that first. And once you get them crimped and give a little tug to make sure that they're fastened securely, that they're not going to come apart. Okay, once we have those all 
securely fastened, then we're going to heat shrink them. And you can use a low heat torch, a lighter, like a grill lighter, or probably the best thing to use would be actually use a hair dryer or a heat gun. But for our purpose, we're just going to quickly do it just like this. Once these are all heat shrinked, then what we want to do is let these cool a little bit and then we're going to wrap this all in electrical tape so that way we know that we're not going to get any moisture in here anywhere that's going to cause any problems. Nice thing about these heat shrink uh, butt connectors, they have like a glue material in there that uh, it serves as a glue to hold the wires in and also uh, as a sealant to help keep moisture out of there. And uh, so that's going to add some extra moisture resistance, plus we're going to tape them up. And then the really cool thing is, is when we get this all done, we're going to put this all in a nice, tidy, nice looking wire loom so that everything looks really good on here. So uh, let those cool and then I'll show you how to do the rest. All right, so we've got these all heat shrink together. The next thing we're going to do here is we're going to wrap this with some electrical tape just to help protect the wires and also to keep any extra moisture and such out. All right, so we've got that all set. That looks nice and tidy. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this all inside some wire loom and then we're gonna start attaching it to our rail here and uh, get it all laid out and down where it needs to be. So we're gonna take our wire loom and we're gonna put that over our wire here it's really easy to do. You just open it up and then just start sliding it over just like so. And we're going to just go through and we're going to do this all the way down to the relay so that we have all this in here. It's going to look nice and neat and very, uh, very clean once we get it all hooked up and attached. So I'm going to get this all on here and then I'll come back and show you guys what it looks like on there. Nice and clean look. It's uh, going to be look really nice up in here. Um, Hopefully we're not going to notice it a whole lot on any account, but if we do, at least it'll look good. So let's get these zip strip, get this zip stripped up in here. I'll go through and do this, and basically we're just going to zip them to the bracket here, and then to the bar as well. Put this one right up against here to hold this. Nice in place there. I'm just going to go along and just attach this all along this rail all the way up and underneath our catwalk here and come down right in behind this hinge for the hood and bring it right into the engine compartment. So I'm just going to finish that up and uh, then go back and, and snip off all of these pieces because uh, you know even though we kind of like the rugged off-road Jeep look we uh, don't want it to be quite this rugged. So I'll cut all that off and it'll be nice and nice and tidy. So we've got our uh, zip strips all cut off. Everything's looking good here. Next thing we did then is went ahead and ran our switch wiring into the cabin of the Jeep. And the way you do that is just look down in here in between your uh, power brake booster and the side of the fender. And there's a little disc on this particular one about say, about that big around that uh, will allow you to be able to push the wires through there. So we've done that, uh, ran the wires to the inside and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up on the inside. Uh, we're gonna run the wires underneath the carpet and over to the center console uh, so we can put the, the switches over there. And then after that, we'll be ready to hook the uh, positive and negative up on the battery and turn this light on. So we've got our switches installed in the cabin of the Jeep here. So the next thing we're going to do is hook up our wires to our battery. Make sure that that fuse is out and not uh, not actually in place there because we don't want that in just yet. Um, we're going to just pull our pull these nuts off of our cables here. And then of course like I said earlier the ground black one is going to go to the negative minus post of the battery here. 
Now as long as the fuse is out, it doesn't matter which one of these wires you hook up first. Okay, we'll hook up the red positive one to the hot or the plus side of the battery. Your wiring harness comes with several different size fuses. Um, what you want to do is look on the list that comes with the wiring harness. It gives you an identification chart as to which fuse to use with which light bar. And ours being the 30 inch, we'll be using the 20 amp fuse. So make sure that you have that correct because that's a very important uh, uh, feature. Otherwise, uh, you might have too big a fuse and cause something to short out or too small a fuse and it won't work because it'll just keep blowing the fuse. So. I'm going to zip strip this all up in here nice to keep it from getting down in any of the engine components and then we'll be ready to put that fuse in and uh, test out our light. Basically it just goes in just like that and uh, we know that our lights are off because if not we would have got a little spark there. Let's push it in there nice and tight. So it sits in there something like that and just cover it with the cap and that's just to keep moisture and such out and just kind of tuck these nice and neatly down here out of the way. Alright guys, so we've got everything all wired up, hooked up, ready to go. So the only thing left to do then is to uh, turn this light on, take a look at it and uh, there you have it. That's how quick and easy it is to install this Rigid Industries Radiance LED light onto your Jeep, truck or whatever else you want to put it on. So remember, until next time, happy motoring.